become an actor, I was doing something on a stage like this. I was doing a small skit. There were three judges there. And uh, one of the judges liked it. She said, hey, this is cool. Uh, will you do it on radio? I said, yeah, sure. I did the same skit on radio. Her friend had come there. She saw it and said, hey, this is cool. Will you do it on TV? I said, yeah, sure. I did it on TV. It was telecast on TV. The film guys at home, I think. For some reason, they liked it. I said, hey, will you act on films? I said, yeah, sure. And I became an actor. One film led to another. And suddenly, I look back. I have so many films behind me. I keep wondering if on the first day, when the lady offered me, will you act, will you do it on radio? If I had said no, me, radio? Come on, I meant for bigger things. Why should I do radio? The entire chain of 150 films would have been cut at that point itself. This is something very strange. You look back, you make a small decision somewhere, that leads into something else, and that leads into something else, and suddenly, you have a huge body of work behind you. So finally, it's all about what you say yes to, what you say no to. When you look back, when the yeses that you say made a lot of sense, lot of sensible yeses, you are a huge success. When you say yes to the wrong things, when you say yes to the wrong things, that is where the flop happens. That's the first thing I learned. The second thing, I was a Kannada actor. I just done my first film in Kannada. There was a Tamil film called Solatta Nene Crane, uh, which was done in Kannada by K. Balachandar. I was doing Kamal's role. So that film released, it was released in Bangalore and these guys from Telugu, some three guys, they used to come to Bangalore to have a drink because that was the pub place. Bangalore was a pub place, now it's there all over. So they came on a weekend to have a drink, they were drunk and they went to this film, they saw this guy, they liked me for some reason. For some reason they assumed I'm a star here, that was my first film. But somehow they assumed I'm a star, they called me and said, uh, they came and said, uh, sir, uh, we are doing a Telugu film, uh, will you act in it? I said, uh, yeah, sure. I have this habit of saying, yeah, sure to everything. And they, they thought I was a star and I said, uh, sir, we can't give you much money. We can give you only 15,000 rupees. And at that time, I was getting 250 rupees, 500 rupees. And these people said, 15,000. And they gave me 5,000 at once. I said, yes, sir, I'm on. So if you think about it, you know, somebody comes for a drink to Bangalore and that makes a career for you somewhere in Telugu. Can you believe it? And then the same thing happened in Tamil. In Tamil, what happened? There was a film called Keladi Kanmani. Vasant was directing. Vasant had worked as Balchandra's assistant in my Kannada film. So this guy calls me one day and says, Ramesh, somebody else is supposed to do this role. That bugger is not cooperating. Can you come and help me? Three days, you come and do this work. Then you give me dates, I'll adjust. I was busy in Canada. I was focusing in Canada. Tamil was not on my radar at all. Because this guy offered, I came, did three days work. I went back, finished the film. And then suddenly I realized, one day I come to Chennai, Keladi Kanmani is a silver jubilee hit. And you know, so, and then I put a room in this Palm Grove hotel. I stayed for 10 days and I signed 14 films. And I couldn't go back to Bangalore. Do you see how this works? Do you see how this whole thing works? See, it's crazy. It's crazy. Somebody offers you something, you come and do something, that becomes a hit and you can't go back to your own hometown. I couldn't go back to Bangalore for six years. I was in Nandanam in a flat. I was doing 45 Tamil films. So when you look at all this, it is so varied. It is so beautiful how light blo life blossoms into something else. So it is very, very wrong to be pessimistic. And I think, you know, this is doomed, that is doomed. I keep reading statements about HR saying it is doomed in uh, three years from now. <laughs> it's crazy. Life is so complicated, so beautiful. Things open up so beautifully. I would sincerely, you know, uh, advise or recommend that please just trust yourself. The life is so beautiful. If you can adapt, if you are, see the one learning about all these three cases in my own case is that I was open. If I had fixed myself that I will not move out of Bangalore, I do only Canada films, these Tamil films wouldn't have happened. If I had, in the first place, not accepted to the radio, the radio wouldn't have happened, the TV wouldn't have happened. It's about how open you are to new experiences. So the next time, this is the main takeaway I want to tell you. People will tell you that the world is changing. People will tell you that HR is changing. People will tell you that is changing. Whenever somebody tells you that, your answer should be, yes, so am I. The world is changing, I too am changing. 
HR is changing, I am changing too. So I have nothing to worry. That is the only solution for all the future of HR is that as long as something changes, when something changes, you are smart enough to change yourself to suit the new environment. That is the basic requirement of future of anything. That's the only thing.